How come I'm red but the sky is so blue? Let's speed run off for cell. The SSD way, baby. Okay, so we are in an empty Next.js project here, and you want to make sure you run this through WSL here in the terminal, or if you're on Mac, it's not going to work on Windows currently with SSD, but WSL works just fine. So let's just run this code R. Let's just open up this project here. So there we go. So we just have a super simple Next application, right? We can run npm run dev, and then we can view this right here. And let's open this up, pop it in. Let's see, are we up and running? should be looking fine and dandy. There we go, cool. Okay, so the first step is to close this up and we are gonna install npm i SSD. Now, whilst this is installing, we also need to set up our AWS account. So let's quickly head over to AWS. Now, if you don't have an account, of course you need to make one, but I'm just gonna log into mine right now. Whilst that's loading up, one more thing we need to do in our AWS account now is to head over to IAM here. Uh, if this is not popping up for you, just search it up here and we'll need to make a new user. So let's go here, click on users. You might have zero here. We'll create the user, give it a name. I'll just do test for now, hit next. And here we can set the permissions as well and we can just grant administration access. So let's do attach policies directly here. There we go. And administration access to that. Okay. And that's all. We're going to hit next, next and create user. And you want to get this uh, security credentials here and create an access. We're going to do other. You can leave that empty. We just want this access key and secret key that we need to pass down to the AWS CLI. Now we can go back here and you can install uh, with brew AWS CLI. So once you install this, you can run the command AWS configure. And when you run this, it's gonna pop up asking you for the access key and the private key. So just paste that in here and then it's all configured and it's ready to go. We can run the command MPX SSD in it. And while this is updating the dependencies, let's update our skills using today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a fantastic learning platform where you learn by doing with thousands of hands-on lessons in programming, math, and even AI. Their courses are designed to make you think like a programmer from day one. What I love about Brilliant is how they break down complex coding concepts. You'll be building real programs using their cool, they have this cool drag and drop editor, and it's perfect for any newbies out there or if you're looking to sharpen up your skills. You can just learn on the go. All these lessons are bite-sized and super interactive. So what I do is usually when I have five or 10 minutes downtime, I just open up the app and find a subject I'm not too familiar with and learn something about it. So if you're ready to debug your learning process, visit brilliant.org slash develop by ed or click the link in the description down below and you'll get 30 day free trial and 20% off your annual subscription. Happy coding. Okay, we are good to go. So now we can head over and open up our SSD config TS file here. And as you can see, this is the name of our application. That we're, so we're going to keep it the same, open SSD. And uh, here, let's go down here. Also name this open SSD. Let's paste that in there. And here we can also configure this any way we want to. So if we want to pass down a domain, we can do it here. Uh, if we want to pass down a link to a bucket, we can also do that there. I'll show you on the actual the other project just so this doesn't take too long, but this is already enough to get this deployed. Uh, one more thing I want to note is if you have environment variables, those can be also defined here. Or what I've seen is if you just have a .env file, it's automatically going to load it from there. So what I do is I have the .env.local for my uh, local development and the EMV for my production stuff in there. And that's automatically gonna, automatically going to be recognized. Okay. But only with this minimal config, we can already set this up and running by running the command SSD, sorry, MPX SSD. And we're going to say deploy, and I'm going to add a stage here and let's, let's give it a name. So I can do this in production. And that's pretty much it. So if you want to add a stage development here, if you want to do some testing, you can also do that. But let's see how this is building out. As you can see, it's generating these static pages and we are almost good to go. One more fantastic thing about SSD is it has a console. So if you head over to console.ssd.dev, as you can see, we're currently seeing our application being pushed up right now. As you can see, it's getting built. And this is another one I have here with a dev and a production as well. 
But this is building, if you want to set this up, let me just go here quickly. I think it's just one. I don't think even you need to install anything. You just need to hook up your email to it. And that's automatically going to connect with the AWS account. So if you want to check that out, also head over to SST console as well. It's fantastic. Well, there we go. We are officially done. Once we hit SSD deploy, as you can see, it's automatically going to give us a CloudFront link here that we can copy over. If we check our console as well, as you can see, it's live and deployed. So if we check this out, let's have a look. Does it work? It works. There we go. How simple was that? So let me also show you how you can add a S3 bucket, hook up your uh, domain and all of that good jazz that you might need. So it's actually super, super simple. So to add a domain, all you literally need to do is expand this in an object here and pass the domain name. So I have developed by the IO. I can also pass a redirect there just like that with an array. And if you want to add a bucket, if you want to add a Postgres database, it's in the docs, you're going to see it's as simple as just defining it up here like that and linking it to your platform. And that's all we need to do here. Now, how does the Namecheap stuff and everything like that works? If you have your uh, domain here already on Route 53, it's much easier. If you don't, if you have it on Namecheap like I did, what you need to do is create one of these hosted zones. And that's what I did. So I created the hosted zone here. And as you can see, developed by Ad.io is there. And then you're going to have all of these uh, here. If you check the NS here, all these name servers that you can pass into Namecheap. And if we check here, I just added a custom DNS and I'm adding all the name servers to that Route 53 hosted zone. And then in the advanced DNS, what you also need to do is send a certificate over. Uh, so it's, uh, I don't know, so they approve it. And the way you can do that is, so after you added this here, you can go back here and then you need to search for certificate manager here. So let's go over here. You'll just need to add a C name record uh, and that's pretty much it. So let's go here. You do a request the certificate. We'll do that next you can give it a name here. So uh, this is going to be the domain. So mine was developed by Ed, but I'll just add something random here like that. Let's do a request. And what you're going to have here is let's go down is the C name here and the C name value. All right, this is the two that you want to get. So you can go here, advanced CNS, DNS, and you're going to have an option here to put that in. And what you want to do is grab this, copy it over and grab this into the C name value. Now, one thing I'm going to say is with Namecheap, don't add the underscore here at, at the beginning because it's not going to work. It's going to error out. And also the dot here at the end, that didn't work for me as well. So it was just this portion here that I copied over and then that. All right. And then it's going to say pending validation. And once it's validated, it should work just fine. OK. And once you have that, you don't need to set up any A records or stuff like that, because in SSD here, if you set the home over to AWS, it's automatically going to do all of that for you. When you do a deploy, you're going to see that your hosted zones here is going to be automatically updated with all of these different DNS records. So these A tags, the A, A tag, C name, this has been automatically added by SSD, which is super, super cool. So there you go. Hopefully you found this process quite enjoyable and simple. Let me know what you think of SSD and how, where you deploy your applications. I'm really curious to hear that from you. And until next time, bye-bye.